Hello my friends, Mark Witherspoon here, welcoming you into our broadcast tonight. We're about to kick off the MLS season with a review of the club and our squad for the upcoming 2018 season. Plus, Audi Field is just days away from being completed, which is a bit strange because it wasn't supposed to be done until July, but we've been assured it is safe 100- <laughs> Hello, my friends. Welcome in. It's a brand new series on the channel. Have you ever started a project and thought, why am I doing this to myself? That's how I feel. We're going to MLS. Yes, America, my friends. We're taking over DC United because they're awful. They're awful. We've loaded all the North and South American leagues that come standard on the Football Manager database, whatever the 18.3 the update, um, the low, all the way down to the lowest divisions, plus... Skybet League 2 uh, and above, and then Italian Serie A and Serie B, because I have already recorded this and I'm re-recording it. Serie A, um, Inter Milan, uh, is an affiliate of DC United, so I figured it would be good to have that league loaded, so uh, let's do Serie B. Um, I'm adding players to the playable teams and preventing use the in-game editor because people in the past have accused me of obviously being so good at Football Manager that I'm cheating. So what we're going to do is we're going to take North and South America, the continents, Players based in the nation and players of that nationality have been loaded in. 69,000 players. We're going to start first matches in 2017 North America, I believe, Champions League matches January 22nd, 2018 because, well, I have no interest in playing all the way through 2017. And what I've done here is I've just gone bloop, bloop, whatever it says we should have for, for being the DC United manager. I'm not changing any of this and we'll just confirm it. Let's start playing. One of the interesting things about DC United is they've played for the since their inception in 1996, they've played at RFK Stadium, which is, well, not the best. Falling apart, you know, known for its rats. But they've built Audi Field, which is brand new 20,000 seater luxury stadium, soccer specific, quite nice, for the black and red supporters. But I've checked, the thing that Football Manager gets wrong here is Audi Field won't be ready, they won't have their first home game until July 14th, 2018. So essentially the first half of the season should should be all away games, which is a really weird way of going about it to be, I mean, obviously that's not normal, but the game is set it up as if Audi Field is already completed. I guess that's the easiest way to, to, to program that so you're not having to switch stadiums you know, in the middle of the season. So that's a, a bit of a downer because it, it adds an interesting twist to 2018. It's like all away games to start the season and then bloop, I'm sure like the back half of the season is all home games. It's got to be messing with everybody's schedule. So we'll do this. They're paying me $13,250 a week, which why? I'm not worth that, but we'll do the meeting. We'll take a look at it. We have two players on loan here from other clubs. One leaves uh, halfway through the season. The other one is all the way through. But let's just... This is the part where I'm like, why am I doing this to myself? I'm going to have to try and explain how transfers work in MLS, and I don't fully understand it myself. So the thing, first thing you have to know about American sports is that they're all about parity. So we're like all this like capitalism and, you know, yeah, like may the best win type country from a mentality standpoint. But when it comes to our sports, we want the worst teams next year to be able to compete rather than there being like consequences, right? Relegation. And then if you do well, promotion. We don't do that. Why would we do that? That, you know, that's too much like capitalism. So instead, we want to make sure owners make money. That's what we're really about. So maybe that's the capitalistic side of it. So when, when it comes to this, there's a bunch of different rules, but the overarching theme you have to understand is there is a salary cap. I'm going to have to do a separate video. So let's look at the background of the club. So you've got four MLS Cup wins. So what's an MLS Cup? That's like, if you are if you follow the NFL, it's like winning, going through the playoffs and winning the Super Bowl. And that's what MLS cares the most about. So it, regular season is the supporter shield. And that would be like if you're Manchester City and you you won the league, but then you take the top 12 teams, really the top six of two conferences, because we the league is in a Western, from your perspective, Western Conference, Eastern Conference, and you take the top six teams of each of those and you dump them in a playoff. So you could you could be you know 
you could win the regular season and get knocked out of the first round of the playoffs, okay? So MLS Cup is like going through the playoffs and winning, and that's like who the champion of MLS is. They've won it four times in 20-something years. That sounds great, right? Well, 1996, 97, 99, first four, four years of existence for MLS, and 2004. Since then, not a whole lot going on for DC United. Yeah. Get pretty good youth facilities, training facilities, but only adequate junior coaching and above average youth recruitment. So we should, you know, to make use of these training facilities and youth facilities, we should probably increase the junior coaching, wouldn't you think? Um, and you can see, yeah, I mean, let's just show you this, right? Up and up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And it's really, it's showing you in, th these are the supporters shield like the, the regular season positions, right? Again, depending on there being 12 teams or six or whatever in the league, or no, it's not, because the number of leagues, the number of teams has changed. So they won the MLS Cup in 1996, but they were third in the Supporters' Shield race. So they didn't win the regular season, but they made a run in the playoffs and won the Cup. So up and down, and like, hmm, 19th in 2013, like, it's just been very poorly run. From everything I read, DC United has been poorly run, cheaply run, but it's kind of a, a little bit of excitement now that they are moving to Audi Field in the middle of 2018. They've got a new sponsor, new kit. They just relaunched a new logo, all kinds of craziness. So interesting, but as I mentioned at the beginning, they have Inter as an affiliate, which comes as a bit of a surprise to me. So. May send junior players to train there. I don't know if they actually do that. We'll have to take a look. And Sunderland, which, well, you know how that went this season now, don't we? And then we've got, obviously, the Academy. And it's confusing. So United will be able to send players on loan to the Academy. Um, have first option to buy players from the Academy, obviously, because it's their Academy. Okay. Um, take a look at the finances. We've got $10.7 million in the bank. we got 900000 in the transfer budget. We've got 132000 payroll. We're spending 125 of that. We've got a scouting budget of 145, which is interesting because, well, we're currently spending 226. So we're going to have to make some changes there, I believe. Um, right. Well, at least we've got proper expectations. Mid-table supporter shield. Be competitive in Major League Soccer and reach the fifth round of the U.S. Open Cup is what that should be titled. I don't know why it's just called the U.S. Cup. Yay. Let's attempt to be competitive. I... I'm curious. So they want us to be mid-table in the supporter shield. And it seems to be competitive. Those things seem to be at odds. So if you finish 7th in the league, that'd be 14th potentially. Would that be mid-table? And that's attempting to be competitive? High expectations in DC, my friends. Okay. Okay. Here is your 2018 DC United squad. Starting in goal, we've got David Oosted. He's Danish, 33 years old, 7.25k a week, worth a million. Uh, he's got three-star current ability, not bad goalkeeper. He's had two shutouts in preseason, but does that really mean anything? He is starting to fall, fall apart a little bit, which is why I'm wanting to have Manuel Hernandez, the 16-year-old, start getting him some games. Like, we are going to play him because, let me show you this, the schedule. Look at this. Three days, four days, four days, three days, five days. What's that? One, two, three days, six days, seven days. Like, there's a lot of games in here at the beginning, of, in particular, where we are going to be forced to rotate. So, he is going to get some games. We're going to try and put him in the games against worse competition because he's 16 and he's one and a half stars, but that's what we're going to deal with. Um, right back is interesting. We got Nick De Leon. That's not how you say it, I'm sure. Um, can play all over. He's definitely more of an attacker, but he's on a first-team contract, and he can play fullback. He may not be our starter there. We're going to rotate him with O'Neal Fisher, but the, the good thing about and the bad thing about O'Neal is he can also play on the left side. Even though it's inverted, we could just put him on a regular old fullback. Um, why is it not showing? Okay, there we go. Um, and we don't have any other like backups to this guy so taylor kemp is our starting left back and if he goes down we are out of luck like we literally have him and fisher and then the other right backs like there there isn't another left back and if you look at our academy right 
yeah, he's he's got some work to do. He's got some work to do. Um, the ice cream truck is coming by my house, if you can hear that in the background. <coughs> One of our two starting center backs, Frederick Brilliant. I thought it was brilliant. Um, 6.25K. Overall, really solid, just not very pacey and fast, and is going to start to go down physically because he's 32. So he's going to see his contract out and probably be his last season with us unless we struggle to bring in youth prospects, which... It, if you look at the academy, that would appear to be the case. Uh, if Steve Bernabal um, is our first teamer, 9.5K, solid. 27-year-old, he's going to be here a while if we can keep him from a financial standpoint. Uh, he's on a regular old senior contract, so we'll have to see how that works. Um, Russell Knaus, 22-year-old, kind of an up-and-comer potentially on the USMNT side. He doesn't have a cap yet, uh, but he has 12 U20 caps and a goal. Definitely more of a defensive midfielder, but I mean, he can definitely hold down the midfield as well. For some reason, it shows his preference as defensive midfield, but he can do this. Been playing him more of a box to box. He can't really finish any work in anticipation, but overall, it's pretty solid. He could just play defense, you know, central midfield defend. Um, lots of options, very versatile. Liking him a lot. Junior Moreno is okay. He's 24 Venezuelan. He's taking up an international slot. If we could replace him, we would, but he's on contract for two years, so maybe not. Um, you know, can't really do the advanced playmaker because his flair is terrible. So he's definitely more of just like a supporting midfielder or a deep line playmaker because that doesn't require flair, just requires picking out a pass. Um, Paul Ariola is our, as we noted, our young, uh, what is, uh, young designated player. I've got to get used to the terminology. Right winger, but I really like him on inside forward, even though he's right footed. I, I've got him training on the left side because if you put him on support, you're getting advantage of his crossing, his first touch. If you put him on attack, you lose the crossing. His finishing's okay. I just think it's it'd be a shame to lose some of that by just playing him on the wing. We may just do winger. I've just been experimenting with the ins like two inside forwards with a deep line forward on support. Uh, Luciano Costa, I made mad during the preseason because he's on 11.5k. It's a senior contract, it's not a DP. Big impact on the the salary cap. Expensive player, and he's really good. Like he can play a bunch of different roles. Really, um, loves the the center of attacking midfield, and he's a fantastic advanced playmaker on attack. He's just expensive, so I loan, I loan listed him and transfer listed him because again I was just trying to get the wage budget or the salary cap budget down. He was quite unhappy, and some of the the team were unhappy, and then no one came in for him, so we just kept him. So I mean, there are worse things than keeping a really good four star, potentially five star player, but you know what I'm saying. Zoltan Stieber is on a first team contract, twelve grand a week, worth two point three million. He can do the wing thing. He could also do the inside forward thing. Again, we were kind of playing around with doing like double inside forwards. We could just do the old fashioned winger, but I like getting those guys involved more in the attack and having them cut in. I just wish we could have Paul like switch sides. Your, your feet would be good on the other side. Um, Patrick Mullins is going to have to be our starting striker. He's okay. I don't know if he's actually on the team anymore, but I know in real life, DC United has not scored many goals this season. So they scored, I think, five last season. The top goal scorer had five. Not not the whole team, the top goal scorer. So we've been playing on deep-blowing forward support. I mean, he's definitely more an advanced forward. He's just okay. So that's why I was thinking if we have the, the inside forwards cut in, he's there in the deep-blowing forward role. He could distribute the ball and get out of the way. But his finishing is good. I mean, if we just put him on poacher, you could do that. So, undecided hasn't been outstanding in preseason. No goals. 6.37. Okay, Kofi Apar. Um, Apar? Apar? Who knows? Solid standard. Two goals because he's six foot two, jumping reaches 12, heading 14. Set piece master theater, my friends. Really good rotational player. Really happy to have him on the squad. O'Neill Fisher, I already pointed him out, left slash right back. I'd like to start him because he's definitely better, um, and we may end up starting him, and then if we have an injury to the left back, slide him over and bring in his backup, but we'll see how that goes. Ian Harks is one of our homegrown players, does not want to be tutored, has a bit of an attitude about that. I've tried all three of the players that were listed under tutor. Oh, there's a new one, yay. Um, not very determined. I think we could help him reach his potential ability a lot faster if he would take tutoring and get the determination up. Kind of
kind of a generalist in the midfield, can do a bunch of different roles, but I'll, he's homegrown, so he's not impacting the sour cap very much. Patrick Narco, I'm, that's, it's probably something else, but Narco, like the show, that's what came to mind, um, can do the winger thing, can also do the inside forward thing on the opposite side. Super determined, resolute, really good for tutoring. Happy to have him as part of the squad, 4.8K. Yamil Assad, we're paying eight grand. To loan him, he can do the inside forward thing. He may start, you know, from time to time, especially in the beginning part of the season on the left side. Just apples sort of rotate out, but obviously really well uh, in the attacking midfield as well. And, and can do the job in uh, regular midfield. Bruno Miranda, last on the list here for at least the, the starting 18 or the match squad, I should say. Uh, Bruno Miranda. Okay, Bolivian on loan. We're paying 1.3K, so that's not a lot. He's on a senior minimum salary contract, so he doesn't count against um, the, the salary cap. But the thing is, he does take up an international slot. So we only have interna eight international slots, and we've used every single one of them. So that's why we needed to kind of move some people around. There was a really good right back and left back, both, that I was trying to pick up, but we just didn't have a spot or wage for them. So it's really strange, right? If you're, if you're used to European football where you've got, mate, we've, we've got – we got 14, 15 grand in the budget we can spend. No, not unless they're on minimum salary contracts or homegrown player weirdness or whatever, because you have the salary cap to deal with. So all that wage budget doesn't do you much good unless you're putting them in the reserves or I don't know, maybe we could pick up some academy players and loan them back so that they're getting paid and they like us. Who knows? We've also kept Jared Jeffrey, okay midfielder. Again, he's on a, oh, he's on a senior contract, but he's okay. He's serviceable. Um, Jalen Robinson, serviceable right back slash center back um, backup option on a minimum salary contract, so he's not impacting the salary cap. Travis Wara, who I already showed you, is just merely okay. Backup goalkeeper. Chris Durkin is a stud in real life. He's had a great season, or at least start to the season for DC United. We've got him getting tutored. His determination has already got up one whole point. I mean, that's pretty aggressive. I'll, I think I've got him tutored. Yes, by Narco. Um, who I should just change his name to just be Narco. He's a defensive midfielder, but he also can spray a pass. Um, so maybe deep line playmaker, something like that. But he's he's quite good. He'll be good in the future for us. Chris Odai Atsim, backup right back. Maybe no right back. I guess maybe in an emergency left back. So again, we have we have several play. We have four players that can play on the right and one that can really play on the left. That seems a bit unbalanced. And then Ulysses Segura, who's Costa Rican, 3K. I've got him listed. I was trying to get rid of him. He's on a senior contract for three grand. He's not. He's worth 36 grand. Someone please take him off my hands. He can. He can come in and rotate. You know, in either role. So we have a lot of versatility at the top of the squad. The, the attacking third. We're a little light. I can say you got Canals, Moreno, um, Ian Harks, and Assad. That we have in the the match squad right now for the midfield and Assad's really more of an attacking midfielder and you've also got Jared Jeffrey and Chris Durkin who could play in midfield but that's that's part of the challenge of MLS is you're dealing with juggling all this and then as you as you see not a whole lot going on in the academy I mean we could I guess maybe sign him to a homegrown but I kind of want to see if he develops he's got potential um, both of them do Sam Baker does but yeah, we could really use some more youth prospects. I don't know why they're all grayed out. You'd think we would have more by now. And I know I could go in and I could offer them contracts and whatever, but I'd rather just take it authentically and just bring in, you know, youth prospects whenever that actually happens. So um, dynamics were at average, very good and average. And we are going to be playing a mix of 4-2-3-1. As you can see, I've been playing around with the inside forwards. I'm going to try it out with wingers. Um, and we also got a 4-1-2-3 because Knaus can play there and Chris Durkin can play there. So I want to take advantage of that against tougher competition. So against competition where we think we can win, we'll probably play the 4-2-3-1, assuming everybody's healthy. Otherwise, it's going to be 4-1-2-3 with the defensive midfielder or if Knaus is there, a ball-winning midfielder to kind of run around. I do have us on work the ball in the box, close down more, higher tempo. We uh, How I came to that decision is we have a, a pretty decent first touch. Um, if we go first touch, we got a lot of players that are – either subs or in the attacking third like a lot of green here in the first touch standpoint so i want us to moving the ball around quickly and we also have you go look at the physicals we've got some good stamina in the squad um 
especially in the defensive third. So I figured closing them down, you know, herring the ball away from them, that's kind of the feeling I have for this squad. Um, and really, if you think 4-2-3-1 with inside forwards, it's a little little bit of Liverpoolish, closing down, herring the team, stuff like that. I'm not saying that we're going to be gagan pressing, but it just gives you kind of the idea. Um, I think this is more more of the Liverpool style, right? Um, got them on flexible right now. I'm just trying to get them to, to learn the various... There's a standard and a control version of this, and I'm playing around with the, the striker option. So we still got some stuff to figure out. That's what's going on. FC Dallas coming up. That's going to be our first game. We will probably do the doubleheader, um, and we'll take it from there. As always, with this being a brand new series, it means a lot if you would support it and uh, accept my not understanding things in MLS. Um, one of the things I was going to show you is you can also, on the contract, you can use your general allocation money to buy down the salary cap impact of your players. So, like, this guy's 4900 I can... I can make if I was really cramped on salary cap style, I could use all all of our general allocation money to knock it down to twenty two hundred to give myself some room. So that's weird. Lots of weird things going on in MLS, but hopefully you'll learn something as we go. Hello Zoltan or whatever. Your name. Yeah, Zoltan. Um, hopefully you'll learn some things as we go, and you'll uh, again put up with me learning MLS as you learn MLS too. Hit the like button. Check this stuff out over here, and we'll see you next time. Let's support the black and red.